Good morning and welcome to the second half of the uh, mobile track. Uh, we have what we hope are some interesting presentations from, from people about their, their implementation experiences. So our first up, we have uh, Hima Chandran to uh, talk to us a bit about frictionless SSO. Good morning, uh, good morning everyone. Welcome to the uh, first session of the last day of CIS. Uh, I'm Hema Chandran. Um, basically manages the authentication and access management and applied materials pretty much. This presentation is gonna, I'm gonna talk about the mobile single sign-on in mobile and how it's gonna be frictionless. Mostly it's from a, a customer standpoint of view that you know, what are the pain points we had and then you know, um, and what we thought, like, you know, how to move forward with this, uh, the mobile single sign-on from, um, from, from the session. I mean, the whole session, what I'm gonna bring out is like uh, the, the problem statement from our standpoint, and then what are the things that we have did from our side, and then what kind of POC that we did uh, to make sure that we can achieve this frictionless mobile single sign-on. <sighs> to get started, oh boy, okay. <laughs> um, I don't wanna... <laughs> I don't want to have the slides since uh, Andre did have the slide in his keynote, but uh, just to make a difference, I just put it upside down. The winter's coming. <laughs> um, yes, the truth is the winter's coming. The reason why I have the slide, it's pretty much the same expectations that from a user communi community they have when mobile SSO is coming, right? Um, the expectations from the user is pretty much they want to have a true mobile single sign-on from all apps. Uh, whatever they have it in-house, they have created, and what are all the third-party native apps from the vendor, and how can we have a true mobile single sign-on across all these apps? Well, that's what the expectation from a customer standpoint that we are giving, okay, hey, we'll be coming soon. But uh, I don't want to be like, you know, season eight or season nine for that to come. It is, the customer requirement is yesterday, and probably we need to get that done as soon as possible. So my, my first slide is gonna talk about what's the problem statement from, a, from an end user standpoint. I mean, what we are seeing uh, to achieve this mobile single sign-on, right? Um, in a way, um, the mobile thing is getting and it's growing day by day. I mean, uh, it, it is like um, the, the transition of from the desktop, from the laptop and mobile, it's, it's tremendous. And are we going in that way to support from an end user experience standpoint to have this true single sign-on mode, right? I mean, um, to start with password, I mean, it is, it is one of the, the thing which people don't like it uh, in, in, in the mobile thing. I mean, they really hate to type passwords. I mean, think about like, you know, I mean, it, it's not user friendly. And think about the industry having like too much of complex passwords, like you know, length of 15 characters with all your, putting your complex things, I mean, uppercase, lowercase, and you gotta, that's the most difficult thing from a user standpoint that they have to keep entering the password in, in the mobile. It is, it is not user friendly and so inconvenient for the users. And sometimes even like entering these passwords, oh, sorry. So sometimes like entering this password a couple of times will end up in a kind of a lockout, right? The second one is about the, the true mobile single sign-on, right? I mean, even though the apps that what we have, it's been federated, uh, all the apps, but still we do have to keep logging in, you know, whenever we, whenever we're trying to access the app. Since like, you know, uh, the, the restriction of apps that's been developed in WebView controller cannot share sessions among the, these apps, but Today, I mean, John and everyone like trying to make things up on the, you know, the OpenID Connect, the AppAuth model moving towards the Safari view controller. But the reality is today, it's like a mix of both, both right? How do we make a true single sign across these apps is what like probably we're looking at. So re-authenticate for every app that we're trying to use from a mobile perspective. And obviously it is not user friendly as well. And the other one, what's from a customer standpoint is like, since we are going towards this mobile and even like high IP application, high risk applications will be trying to access and how can we have a, a frictionless step up authentication in the mobile world, right? The, the, these are the, you know, some of the 
from an end user standpoint, from a customer point of view, what they're expecting since like the transition of moving from laptop and desktops and getting everything mobile friendly. Well, I, we thought like, okay, hearing from the customer, this is what the main problem, what they're hearing for. And finally, what they're looking at is, I need a, a desktop experience in mobile. I don't have to keep logging in in my mobile all the time, right? I mean, you just unlock the phone device and try to access the app and then should be able to end. Right, I mean, this is exactly what they uh, They come and ask me, okay, hey, why not I can have the same experience of what I have in laptop, right? I mean, how can you guys achieve these things in, in your mobile? I mean, that's what pretty much like, you know, what we are looking forward and how can we achieve this? Uh, the thing like what we have done in this one, it's pretty much a proof of concept that what you've done after talking to so many vendors, uh, how can we get it done? But, you know, making it enterprise ready, moving forward, like still we have things to get done, but uh, well, what the result we got is pretty much convincible. It was like usable. I mean, that's what I wanna show in this session. The, the second one is talking about the, uh, the technical challenges, right? I mean, we have standards. I mean, we have so many standards there. We've got app auth, and then we have open ID connect, which, which we wanna use for Safari view controller, which we wanna use for the custom Chrome tab. And there are like vendor own SDKs that we want to get integrated with. And you know, Fido come up with a pretty good, simple, strong authentication. But the realistic point of view is like, you know, hey, we have like ingrown, homegrown applications, right? I mean, we have to integrate those SDKs to get those things done. I mean, from my standpoint, like we want to get through in a way that, okay, hey, I'm gonna have AppAuth as my strategy for, for all my mobile integration. Well, I can control that from an, from an homegrown applications what I have in my, in my I mean, enterprise. But what about all these apps deployed by the vendors? What about all these native third-party apps which, which we don't have app out there, which, do, which they don't have like Safari V controller, which they don't have like custom Chrome tab. I mean, but we still want to use those apps, right? I mean, holistically, like how are we gonna have this single sign-on across all these apps and what kind of solutions probably we can get through. I mean, that's, that's one of the technical challenges we had. But anyway, we wanna go to the model of, uh, you know, you know a, a proper standard of moving towards OpenID Connect and moving, moving towards the Safari View Controller and Custom Chrome Tab. But right now, the, pro the right now, how are we gonna solve that problem is what that we have invested and then we found, okay, fine, how can we get this through? through a small quiz, yeah, I I'm, I'm keep doing this, sorry about that. <laughs> so what, what we have did is a, a kind of a POC, pretty much from an iOS standpoint, uh, a Kerber's uh, single sign-on. This is, a, this is a, a, an app, iOS app configuration, native, their own configurations, we took that from there and and then we were, we did configurations from there and I mean, uh, looking at the, if you can find this in the iOS uh, security guideline, there are some um, information about the single sign on what the iOS provides. So we started with, okay, fine, hey, let's try this one and uh, um, how can we get this as part of a POC to have this Scribro single sign on in iOS. So we require an, an, um, an mobile device management. So. Uh, what the mobile device management does is actually pushing a, a kind of a, a Kerberos uh, payload configuration. And uh, that particular payload configuration do have like, you know, uh, three important information. It has more information, but three uh, uh, uniquely what I want to say is one is the, the domain information. The second is the identity cert, whether it can be a, a device cert or can be a user certificate, but pretty much wants to identify, okay, this is the identity of the user of the device. And the third one is about the app restriction. The app restriction is pretty much like, okay, which app can use this Kerberos payload? I mean, when, to, when you have, once you have this Kerberos payload uh, configuration pushed into the mobile, uh, we gotta make sure that, you know, hey, it, it cannot be exposed to all apps that you have it in, the, uh, in your phone, but we have to make sure only certain apps can use this Kerberos payload and then you have that kind of an app restriction that you can push it through the, uh, the payload configuration. So once we have that, uh, the MDM, you know, pushing towards the, to the, uh, your iOS device with this configuration, the client by itself can, can 
talk to the, the Kerberos infrastructure, and obviously right now it's in, the, uh, in, in your parameter, in your uh, company network, and it talks to the, uh, you know, the Kerberos infrastructure through the on-demand VPN or like through the, you know, the corporate Wi-Fi in, in terms of exchanging the Kerberos ticket. But what the good thing about it is like, you know, since we are using the identity certificate, uh, the, the single sign-on, it's pretty much frictionless. It's like when you open an app, it identifies, hey, this app, okay, I wanna use the, the Kerberos payload, and then I'm gonna talk to my, my domain controller or to my Kerberos infrastructure, and then it's, it initiates a PKI in it, and then it starts exchanging the certificate, which is private keys, which is in your device, pushed by MDM, and then talks to, the, to the, uh, the domain controller, which is pretty much a seamless, which the user will never know what's happening at the back end. So from a user standpoint, what happens, you click the app, and then, you know, boom, you're in. But everything happens at the back end, like exchanging the certificate and then identifying the user and identifying the device and everything that happens at the back end and then you get authenticated and a Kerberos ticket will be, will be in, the, uh, you know, in the device. So what happens once the device, it's pretty much a, a long sequence diagram. I couldn't have this whole infrastructure laid out, but I have a sequence diagram I can show it in. Uh, once you have the service ticket pushed into the device, the IDP uses that certificate to make sure that, okay, hey, what kind of assertion that I have to do with the service, I mean, with the service ticket, right? Either it can be a SAML, either it can be an open ID connect, or either it can be OAuth, or any, any protocol that Federation supports, pretty much the IDP can use it with the help of service ticket, which one acquire from the device. I can probably show this. Uh, This is a long sequence diagram, actually. Uh, you know how it, how the, how the flow actually works from a, uh, from a Kerberos authentication perspective. The user uses the native SaaS app. Can be either a, a web view controller app or can be either a, a Safari view controller app. And that app has kind of a browser in it. And can be an embedded browser or uses the Safari view controller. I mean Safari browser. It's going to talk to the SaaS app, which is the service provider, and it's going to send the SAML auth and request and it identifies, okay, hey, the IDP requires a Kerberos authentication, but it does a kind of a, a spin go challenge back to the browser. At that point of time, it identifies, okay, hey, this payload is to be, has to be utilized for this particular application. And then, and then the device by itself, the client by itself, talk to the KDC and does the, you know, um, <coughs> does the TGD response and get the service ticket. And once the service ticket is there, and the IDP can consume that service ticket and thus the, uh, and create the assertion and send it back to SaaS. So all these things happens at the back end where the user, there's no interaction of the user point of view. So, so from a user standpoint of view, pretty much like, okay, click the app and then you are in. And that's what, that's what the user is expecting. I mean, they don't want like keep entering the user puzzle because the first factor, what they think is like having a pin for a device I'm fine with it, right? I mean, why do you want to have, like, keep entering my password again and again, right? I mean, that's what they, they're looking at. I mean, I'm gonna have a, a quick demo that I've created on this. So, uh, I've used, like, certain three apps. I mean, one is Salesforce, another service now, and SAP Fiori. Those three apps is being downloaded from the App Store, and then there is no configuration done, there is no wrapping done, there is nothing being done. I mean, all we've done is okay, we have pushed a kind of a payload at the back end, and then we have made necessary configuration changes in the IDP. And let's see how that works. So, trying to access the service now first, and then you know, you choose your tenant and identifies the certificate, and then boom, you're in. So <clears throat> that's, that's what the experience is. And the, 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 the good thing is like once the first authentication is done, the device has that particular service ticket, and that, that session can be utilized across other apps in, 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 the, uh, in the device. So you're trying to access the Salesforce, and you're in. And hit hello, <coughs> and that's it. So whatever session's been created in the service now, it's been utilized in the Salesforce as well. So from a user standpoint, 
it's frictionless, and we were able to get it done through our corporate Wi-Fi and then the, the, the VPN network. And the last one, what we tried, okay, since we consider this as a high IP applications, we wanna have a, another step up authentication added to this. So after the first authentication is done, it's gonna bring up, okay, fine, hey, I need another biometric authentication, which in case, like, I used ping ID for it. Those, those are the three apps that you know we did kind of a POC in our environment, see how uh, the experience looks like, and then you know uh, whether we were able to achieve this frictionless single sign-on without even having entering the username and password. One one good thing we want to we find it okay, fine. It works with uh, a, an application that developed in WebView Controller, an application that developed in you know Safari View Controller or Custom Chrome Tab, and then you know even you can have like homegrown application, but all it needs to be, it has to get federated with one of your IDP. And that's what are pretty much a requirement. And then the MDM should be capable of pushing that <coughs> configuration into the device so that, you know, those devices can be managed by the MDMs. I think that's, that's pretty much it I have. But one, one thing I have is like, okay, my frictionless is like, from a sign-on perspective, yes, I was able to get it through uh, from a, from a single sign-on perspective. But another thing which, from a user community, what they, what they don't like is they have to log into their VPN most of the time, right? I mean, how can we avoid that? I mean, so how can we make this, oh, third time. <laughs> so how can we make this available from an internet, from a public internet perspective, right? I mean, um, so, we, we haven't, I mean, we are still working on this. Um, can, can a Kerberos delegation can be done via our IDP or MDM uh, so that, you know, the device talks to your IDP or MDM and then MDM in turn talk to your Kerberos, con I mean, for your Kerberos infrastructure to exchange your ticket so that it could be very seamless. Or can we expose KDC to the perimeter network? I know what's the next question in your mind. Are you nuts? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, I want to leave this presentation, this is my last slide, by the way. Uh, I want to leave this presentation saying, like, but can we uh, think about it? And then, you know, if it's possible, this could be, a, you know, a seamless single sign-on experience that we can achieve uh, from, a, from a user standpoint. It's pretty much a productive thing that I can get through with. I think that's all I have. What is the uh, MDM you are using? We're using mobile line right now. <coughs> hey, you, you talked about um, per app VPN for the apps. Can you talk a little bit more about what you're actually connecting to? Do you have it configured to connect to your DCs or is it just an always on for that app? So uh, you can configure it in a couple of ways for the per app VPN. Um, one is like you can, there are some applications which is hosted inside your perimeter which you want to have a, a VPN to access those applications. The second thing is about like configuring it to talk to your domain controller to have these, uh, the Kerberos ticket exchanged. So uh, you can invoke the VPN in a way that, okay, hey, if something is trying to talk to this particular DNS and invoke a VPN, and then once the communication is done and we're able to achieve the uh, integration, I mean, you can turn off the VPN or it can be a salon. But it is, uh, it is a per-app VPN, but it's not an L3 or a full tunnel VPN that we invoke. Yep. How do you uh, mitigate the risk of a loss or a stolen device, or did you guys think about that? Well, I, I believe, like, uh, uh, that's one, one thing, like, you know, from an MDM standpoint, that we should be able to remotely control your device. I think Ashish is here. Uh, so uh, the, you have the possibility of, okay, the MDM, okay, the device is stolen, but you can control the complete devices through your MDM, right? You can wipe off the whole thing and whatever it's been moved, pushed by your MDM. On one of your slides, you showed that you tied the certificate to the user through AD. How did you do that? 
So uh, what happens is uh, when you push this, the payload configuration, uh, you have a private key certificate which is pushed into your device. At the same time, there'll be a public key certificate will be pushed into your Active Directory. That's the relationship, right? I mean, that's done by the SCIP protocol. Um, any kind of uh, CA that you have, you can have a SCIP enrollment through your MDM, which pushes your private key certificate, which gives you the identity of the user or the device, and there'll be a public key sitting in your DC infrastructure. And that exchange can identify, okay, hey, this is the user, this is the device they're trying to access. Well, that could be good enough to get, gather the user information from there. Other questions? We've got a couple over here. Uh, thanks for the for the talk. Uh, you mentioned that the apps that you showed as examples for single sign-on, there was no change done to the apps themselves. Yeah. Uh, but you mentioned that there are some of the configuration changes that had to be done. So can you talk a little bit about what those were? The apps are pretty much downloaded from the App Store directly. Okay. Um, so I log into the App Store, download the app. There is no configuration is done. Um, the configuration, what is done is pushing your configuration through your MDM and then having your configuration, respective configuration in your IDP, which pretty much we does for every other applications, right? I mean, uh, so from an app perspective, there is no SDK integrated, there is no wrapping done, nothing is being done actually. Okay, and uh, the swim lane diagrams that, that you showed, I mean, it was uh, uh, pretty involved, so it was hard to follow from this distance. Uh, would the slides be available later on? Uh, I can share it, that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Let's see. I, I, I thought there was another one. Um, yeah, I'll get you. So how does application know that I need to invoke the kernel authentication? So uh, my previous slide, I did show it about, uh, in, in a payload, you have something called app restriction, right? So when you push the payload, you would probably give information about okay, these are the apps, should utilize this payload configuration to invoke this purpose. But so that's imported in the iOS device as a whole, right? Yep. So application is a app store. You can have, oh, no, 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 not about the Apple store. So every, every app has an ID in it, right? I mean, you can use that particular ID, put it in your, the, the app config, I mean, the payload config. So it identifies based on that, okay, this ID of this app can use this payload configuration for single sign off. Okay. And where do we get the Kerbo sticker in the first place? Is it MDM pushing it to the device? The client needs to talk to the uh, the DC to get the ticket, where the use of the certificate is being pushed into the device. So when 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 you're trying to access the app that requires a Kerbo's authentication, so the client I, I mean understands okay, hey, I need to use the payload where it has the domain information where I need to talk, and it uses the certificate and then it talks to the domain and get the Kerbo ticket. And that Kerberos ticket is being utilized by the IDP for the assertion. Okay, thank you. Anything you guys have tried on the Android? Sorry, I didn't. For the Android device, uh, any we, experience We haven't there? tried actually in the Android, but it does have that capability, but uh, we didn't do a POC on that one. Sorry about that. Yeah, I, I can actually uh, answer that question. With, with Chrome, there is a, a, a Kerberos capability it's, uh, it's n uh, not exactly the same, and, and those that are interested can come and talk to me uh, afterwards. But uh, it is, uh, some of this pattern is reusable on um, Android as well. Uh, we should point out that um, the app does need to be uh, Kerberos enabled by the app developer. Uh, there, there are quite a few, as, as, uh, as you've learned, that, uh, that, that are, right? Other questions? All this sounds great. Is there a catch? <laughs> <laughs> it should be a catch if you expose your DC outside. <laughs> uh, it, it, just to summarize the things that we know uh, generally about Kerberos, the, the main catch is it's right now it's smoother on iOS yes. than it is on Android. The app developer definitely needs to support that model. You've got to expose your, uh, your, your uh, um, uh, parts of your infrastructure mm -hmm. either directly to the internet, which uh, is tricky, or you've got to use the uh, uh, 
uh, on-demand VPN yeah, on or demand an Android, VPN. it's uh, it's uh, the the uh, per app or uh, well, there's there's several names for these on, on different platforms, yep. and um, and you you've got to use an EMM that can provide the certificates. Yes the user certificates, and you've got to include that in Active Directory. So there's a lot of work behind there's the scenes. There's a lot of work behind this. I mean, to make it, I mean, it could be easy for the users to see, like, click the app, boom, but you got to do a lot of work behind it. Other questions? Um, you said about the app ID, you know, identifying in your configure IDP config, have you noticed that that changes with major updates at all? Well, maybe. Okay. Uh, sh we'll be there. I mean, right. we're not sure about that, but that's one thing. Like you know, I did think about it. Uh, you know, how do we keep updating it in a way that we can control these apps can access this? So I'll just make a comment on top of the questions that you have. Yes, sir. So I'm part of AirWatch, by the way. So we have the same model deployed at about 50 customers in production, both for iOS and Android. And to answer your question about the KDC to be exposed to the internet, when you push a profile on the app, you can give the KDC endpoint. And what we have done with customers to avoid the VPN issue, to actually have a different KDC deployed in the cloud, decoupled from your on-prem exactly. KDC, and that makes the deployment exactly. of the whole thing much easier and you know, avoid the risk of exposing your KDC through an iOS device. Exactly. So anyway, but that's, yeah. It sounds complicated, but uh, it, it's been deployed in variety of, of uh, actual customer deployments today. Yeah, it is doable. That's, that's exactly right. You can have an isolated DC, which, is, which has no connection to your existing domain controller. So it's pretty safe. Thanks, Ashish. Uh, it, th this is uh, something that right now, it, only really large customers have been deploying historically. And uh, there is a, a, a bit of legwork, but it's becoming, uh, especially for the uh, largest EMMs, something that uh, is being done more frequently. And certainly we wanted to expose this uh, on the mobile track so that uh, th those that uh, are in this space have an opportunity to understand where, where the EMM, where the AD infrastructure, uh, where, where the identity infrastructure yeah. all comes together to, uh, to, yep. to make this work. Yep. On Android, since you cannot push the same Kerberos profile, the other alternative way without making any app code change on any legacy or new Android devices is to put an on-demand VPN profile along with the app in the app restrictions. And when the app makes any API call, you can route that traffic through a proxy. And that proxy can pick up the cert from the device and do the same handshake that we showed. So we can deploy the solution across iOS and Android. Just so that nobody gets confused with terminology, we don't have anything called on-demand VPN in Android. What we have is uh, the uh, VPN service has something called per-app VPN, and uh, the VPN providers generally support, uh, most of the VPN providers are supporting that. That's been available since Lollipop. Uh, and so that allows you to not have to uh, uh, push the VPN each time. Also, uh, Yes, uh, starting with uh, Nuga, it's possible to have a mandatory VPN in Android, which simplifies uh, parts of this. So the combination of mandatory VPN and per app VPN uh, it gives us that functionality. So uh, are, are we all, all, all arranged? Okay, excellent. Okay, uh, we're ready to get uh, the next session started. I uh, appreciate all the questions. Let's. Uh, all right, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you.